as I start to move into what we're going to talk about today, it's important to say more than ever before, if you are not praying, this is a call to prayer. Every single one of us who knows the Lord and certainly every single one of us who is prophetic needs to be praying at this moment in time that the Lord would be gracious upon us in order to prevent the different regional conflicts, three major regional conflicts brewing that are brewing right now to prevent them from going global and plunging the world into a third world war. This is not a video meant to frighten you. This is a video meant to give you in insight into the spiritual dynamics behind what is happening because first and foremost I believe that the Lord is saying this is a spiritual conflict that is manifesting now on the ground so to give you insight but also to help you to know how you can pray to be able to see God's will done and his kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven in these very very turbulent times. Now, it was around the time of uh, the American elections and actually, you know, the inauguration of the current president. And as I was watching the news, because there was unrest, there were riots, there were disturbances on the streets in uh, quite a number of uh, American cities. But as I was watching the news, all of a sudden, the Lord took me into a vision. And as I looked, I saw the veil of heaven opening up. And as it opened, I saw three creatures looking down upon what was happening in the United States. And those three creatures had the form of a bear and a dragon and a wolf that wanted to be a lion. And I could tell that it was a wolf that wanted to be a lion. Why? Because the Lord allowed me to hear the intents of the heart of that wolf. Wolves are devourers, they are scavengers. Anyway, obviously the bear was Russia, obviously the dragon was China, obviously the uh, wolf that wanted to be a lion was the nation of Iran. Once again, bear, Russia, dragon, China, the wolf that wanted to be a lion was Iran. What does that vision have to do with what is happening now in Israel? Well, at the time that he gave me that vision, Russia was already busy with the uh, conflict, Russia, Ukraine, that was already busy. At the time he gave me that vision, you know, it's just China had already started to hurt, assert herself as the new and upcoming uh, leader nation. But Iran had not yet overtly begun to actually assert itself in the nations of the world in full view of everyone. And so now, with the situation that we are in, many believe, and actually uh, are reporting too, that Iran and flows of money to that are uh, actually inciting Hezbollah. Anyway, many believe that uh, Iran is behind inciting Hezbollah and emboldening Hezbollah, obviously with the help of funding from different nations in order to attack Israel right now. As I start to talk now about the spiritual dynamics of all of this, I'm reminded of the fact that in August, you know, the Lord led my husband and I and the apostolic center that we lead into a time of prayer and fasting for this new Jewish new year, this new church year. And he had us dwell for the 10 days on the book of Esther. And one of the things that kept coming up, even before we knew anything about this, was just to cry, Lord, would you allow uh, Haman, or would you cause Haman to hang himself on his own noose? Lord, would you expose, would you bring forward, Lord, what we need to see right now, not only as an individual church, but as the body of Christ. And he has brought that forward. Now, Haman was obviously the person who wanted to eradicate the Jews in the time of Queen Esther and of Mordecai, her uncle who raised her. And Haman, it says, was an Agagite. He was a descendant of King Agab, 
Agag, who was the king of the Amalekites at that time. Amalekites, an ancient nation, actually, if you look up where it was, the Amalekites and Amalek, the nation that they came from, was close to the nation of Canaan. That was a promised land that God had given to the Jews. And interestingly enough and very significant, the Amalekites were the first nation to attack the Jews on their exodus out of Egypt and to the promised land. And even though the nation of Amalek does not exist anymore, the spirit behind it, that anti-Jewish sentiment does. Where does that spirit come from behind the nation of Amalek and that anti-Jewish sentiment? Well, the scriptures talk about the fact that Esau, the brother of Jacob, had a son and he named his son Amalek, who was actually the father of the Amalekite nation. And so it is generally considered by biblical scholars that essentially that hatred towards the descendants of Jacob got into the earth through that line right there. And so indeed, Haman was an Amalekite. And, or sorry, Haman was an Agagite and then Agag was a descendant of the uh, Amalekites. And so that is where this is. And as I said before, even though the Amalekite nation has ceased to exist, that spirit is still in the world. Also significant for those who want to have so spiritual understanding of why this conflict is brewing right now. Interestingly enough, the name Iran, you can Google it on Wikipedia, the name Iran was given to the country that is now called Iran only in 1935. The Persian Empire and Persia, as it was called for millennia, had been around for thousands of years. However, in 1935, something changed and Iran instructed all of the countries that it had relations with to start to call it Iran, that means the land of the Aryan. That means the land of the Aryan. And that is very, very significant. Why do I say it is significant at this time? Because I think if you know your history at all around World War II and Germany and uh, just the Aryan race, then you will know that that is where it's coming from. And so we're talking here about a murderous spirit that actually was able to rear its head again against the Jews in World War II. And it's the same spirit that's coming at Israel again now in another form. Now, this is some of the spiritual background to help you to understand as God's prophetic people, the spiritual dynamics behind what is going on right now. But then the question is, how should we then pray? And it's essential that we pray and that we pray now. And that's why I'm asking, you know, just or I'm making this video a bit earlier and uh, releasing it earlier. Why? Because there's been a call, you know, for a Friday, the 13th of October to be called, you know, a day of rage uh, for Muslims against uh, Jews everywhere. And that is something that we need to pray to call a halt to now in the name of Jesus. How should we then pray? Number one, to realize the battle is not against flesh and blood. And in Ephesians chapter six, verse 12, it says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Now, we're talking here about a demonic principality when we talk about the spirit behind all of this stuff. This is important that we do not confront that principality ourselves, but what we need to know is that we don't pray against people, but we pray 
against these spirits. How do we pray against them? Say, the Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. All right. That is how we pray. We pray in the name of Jesus. And it is a spiritual battle. So this spiritual battle must be won in prayer. Number two, we, we don't pray against the Palestinian people. Actually, God loves the Palestinian people. Why? Because God loves the sons of Ishmael also. And the thing is, there is much bloodshed going on right now on both sides. A couple of things, though, that we do pray. First of all, we do pray for the peace of Jerusalem. That is a biblical command. We should and we must pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And actually, in the prophetic books, it talks about give the Lord no rest until he establishes Jerusalem again as a place on the earth. However, as we pray for Jerusalem, it's important to realize that we don't have to always be in agreement with everything that the Israeli government is doing. God's heart for Israel is based on his covenant that he made with one man, the man Abraham. A covenant is a promise that God will not ever break. And God said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 22, he talked about the fact that he said, by myself I have sworn, Genesis 22 verse 16, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing, have not withheld your son, your only son. Blessing, I will bless you, and multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars in heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore, and your descendants will possess the gates of their enemies. And here it comes in Genesis 22, verse 18. It says, in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed me. God promised Abraham, you know, that all the nations of the earth would be blessed through Israel. It's a promise that God intends to keep. As long as there is night and day, Israel will continue to exist on the earth. Why? Because it is God's covenant people. Now, I was tackled the other day after church by someone who came to me and said, yes, but how can you pray for Israel when you know, you know, what we're doing, what they're doing and how they're oppressing other people? I'm not blind, but the Lord is saying those who bless Israel will be blessed. So we are to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We are to pray that God would bless Israel, but we are also to pray and to speak out the love of God for the Palestinians. There are many Palestinian believers who are also dying in this conflict, and God sees them, he hears their cry, and he loves them also. I'm not excusing some of the stuff that Israel has done in the past. However, one of the things that the Lord said to me a while ago that settled it for me with regards to praying and blessing Israel is that if we do not, um, let just put it like this, God's promises to Israel are based on his covenant. Just like our salvation is based on a covenant that God has with us that if we believe on him and if we confess his name, then we will be saved. Covenants are things that God never breaks. We don't deserve salvation. Jesus offered it to us. Covenants are based not on things that we deserve, but they are based on God's grace and mercy. So indeed, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray, please, for God's protection for both Palestinians and for Jews in this time of fighting with Hamas. Also to pray and ask the Lord to keep public attention with Israel. One of the prophetic words that a group of international prophets that I have the honor and the joy to be associated with have gotten is that as casualties rise, the nations will start to turn against Israel. Please pray urgently, even today, that this will not happen. And even though this video is made for October the 13th, this, these are prayer requests that we need to continue to pray until this conflict ends.
also pray and ask the Lord to contain the situation. I said it in the short of this video before, but when God showed me the vision of the bear and of the dragon and of the wolf that wanted to be a lion, he said essentially that they were going to try and divide and conquer, meaning that these three would move on different nations at the same time time. That is the plan of the enemy. Why? And these nations are not our enemy. We're talking about the nations of our soul, Satan himself. But that is the plan of the enemy, to divide and to conquer. And so once again, Lord, we just stop that now in the spirit. We decree and declare there will be no simultaneous attacks on these three different fronts in the world. Asia, Russia, Ukraine, and Iran, Israel. No simultaneous attacks at the same time. And also, as we pray to, I just want to say it's really, really important for those of you watching also that we pray for the European Union, that she holds her stand as being pro-Israel. We pray for the United States of America that God would help and help it to uh, be restored to its position as one of the leader nations of the world, if not the leader nation of the world. Why do I say that? It's because it's not a position I believe that they have claimed for themselves, but it is a position that God himself has given them. So please pray for those things. I'll be keeping you updated with more things on how to pray. That's enough for now. But if you see this video, would you please share it? Would you please send it to others? It's so incredibly important that we get this out now to as many people as possible who have a heart to pray for this Iran-Israel conflict, but also to pray against a global jihad that's been called forth against all Jews in all of the nations on Friday, October 13th and afterwards. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. I just say, may God, Lord, bless you and keep you. May he fa make his face to shine upon you. May he give you and your family internal peace at this time of great turmoil. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh,